So the first thing I need for the puree is two cups of basil leaves. What I'm gonna do is blanch them in hot water, and what that does is really set the green color so it's fresh green basil in the potato basil puree. So I need a big pot of boiling salted water. What I'm gonna do is use the same water for the basil as I am for the potatoes. So two cups of fresh basil leaves right into the water. And it's gonna sit there for about 15 seconds, just until it's blanched. And then into ice water, which is called shocking, and it really sets the green color. Okay, right into the ice water, which is why you wanna have the ice water ready before you start. Okay, next, the potatoes. So I've got two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. They're peeled and maybe about one and a half inch dice. And those are gonna cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. And while they cook, little home movies. I'm gonna show you where I got the inspiration for these potatoes. It's the Bistro de Paris, it's near the Seine, and it's the real thing. Old school Parisian bistro with incredible charm. If you order veal chops in a place like this, you are definitely having potato puree alongside. So, drain potatoes, put the lid on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is heat up some half and half. I've got one cup, just to a simmer. I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. It's really important not to let the cream boil though because Parmesan will end up a mess. Okay, next I'm gonna puree the basil in the food processor. Just strain it really well. Ooh, that's cold. So I'm just gonna put this in and then I'm gonna put the cream in and puree them together. It's hot but not boiling. So this is the mixture that's gonna go into the potatoes. So just give it a whir. So now I'm going to show you how I make mashed potatoes, actually in the pot. And I'm just going to break them up a little bit and then turn it on. And it makes the most fabulous mashed potatoes. Light and fluffy. Okay, so these are perfectly broken up. So just very slowly add the, enough basil cream so it, the mashed potatoes are the right texture. I always save a little bit for later just in case they get too thick. Okay, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper. Just mix that all in. Ooh, does this smell good. It's a tough job I have. Oh, it's smooth and creamy. The basil is, mm, it's just delicious. You can really taste the Parmesan. Mm. This potato basil puree smells so amazing. I'm just gonna give it a whisk. It's just the right texture. You can really smell the Parmesan and all the basil. Wow. A little sprinkling of Parmesan on top. Could it look any better? I'm gonna start with two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. And I cut them in big chunks, one inch chunks. I love that I don't peel them because I hate peeling potatoes. So, potatoes go on the sheet pan. This recipe is inspired by River Cafe in London, which is renowned for its Italian food. So the next thing's garlic. I need eight cloves of garlic. This is what I do. I take off the stem end, and instead of peeling it, what I do is I just tap it lightly, and you'll see the peel just comes right off. And I'm gonna put the whole garlic right on the pan, just like that. Next is two branches of rosemary. I just put the whole thing on. Don't even have to take the leaves off. Next, I'm gonna do a half a lemon. I'll show you how I prep it. Cut the ends off. Slice it like that. And then just slice it really thinly. And this is gonna roast right on the pan with the potatoes. All the sugars in it caramelize. And they mix with the potato. Okay, these are classic Tuscan flavors. Lots of olive oil just enough so that it's gonna roast perfectly. Lots of salt and pepper. Pepper. Okay, clean hands, cook's best tool. <laughs> just toss them all together and spread them out in one layer. Okay, into the oven, 375 degrees for 55 minutes until they're nice and browned and crisp. Tuscan roasted potatoes should be done 
I smell all that lemon. It's just fantastic. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take out the rosemary stems. But how amazing is that? All the leaves come off. Okay, one more ingredient. This is one of my really important good ingredients is fleur de sel. I'll tell you more about it later. Just a sprinkling, and that's Tuscan roasted potatoes with lemon, and the lemon makes all the difference in the world. So I've boiled two pounds of potatoes. I like to mix the white and the red potatoes. And what I'm gonna do is just slice these really thickly. These are almost done. And then what I'm gonna do while it's still warm, this gives it so much flavor, is about two tablespoons, but a nice splash of white wine. You can use leftover wine from dinner last night and a splash of chicken stock. And while the potatoes are still warm, it really gets into the potatoes. Big spoon, just toss it all together. Some salt and pepper. You want the potatoes just to have as much flavor as possible before you start. So that's the potatoes. And the next thing I'm gonna make is the vinaigrette. So the key ingredients for a good vinaigrette are good vinegar and good olive oil. I'm gonna do, this is champagne vinegar. But if you have good cider vinegar or white wine vinegar, it's great. I just wouldn't use red wine vinegar for this. And then I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And salt and pepper. For some reason, I think Americans are really sort of daunted by vinaigrette. It's the easiest thing in the world and so much better than that bottled stuff you get. and then slowly pour good olive oil into this. And you make an emulsion. The mustard seems to emulsify the vinaigrette so it stays together. It's kind of like I'm making a mayonnaise. Just do the olive oil slowly. Great, so this is just gonna go on the potatoes. Just to flavor them. And that's all gonna soak into those warm potatoes. And the rest I'm gonna save for later. And now the last thing is lots of fresh herbs. And that's what gives the potatoes such a fresh flavor. So we have chopped scallions. Chop them already, but give them another rough cut. I really like when they're roughly cut. I don't like them to be so precision-like that you don't actually see what it is. It just gives you a sense that there are scallions in it. Look how gorgeous this looks. And fresh basil, just take the leaves off. And you can either do this with a rough chop or you can do it julienne, but I think I'm just gonna do it roughly chopped. Okay, lots of fresh basil. And then fresh dill. It's a great way to take leaves off the dill. It's just run your knife along the and takes all those leaves off without pulling them off one by one. And then the longer this soaks in the fridge and the longer it sits, the better it tastes. So Mm. Potatoes are really tender, but they're still firm enough so they have flavor. I could use a little more salt. That's my motto, it always needs more salt. A little more pepper, bring out the flavors, and it's gonna be just delicious. In my experience, if you don't make mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving, somebody's gonna complain. So I'm gonna show you my classic mashed potatoes and three variations, just to turn up the volume. So the potatoes are cooked. Test them with a knife, make sure they're perfectly cooked. And they are. So I'm just gonna drain them. Ooh, nice steam bath. <laughs> okay, at this point, basically most people would use a potato masher or a food mill, but I'm gonna do them in an electric mixer and they come out really creamy and chunky at the same time. So good. I'll put them in the bowl of an electric mixer, turn it on low speed for a few seconds just to break them up. Then slowly add a hot mixture of one cup of whole milk and six tablespoons of melted butter. This makes the potatoes really creamy. Then I'll add a half a cup of sour cream, two teaspoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon of black pepper. Give it a final mix and the potatoes are done. So once you've nailed the classic recipe for mashed potatoes, you can use it for all kinds of incredible variations. Let me tell you about some of mine. Idea one. Add three ounces of room temperature white truffle butter to the mashed potatoes. Mix it in and classic mashed potatoes become truffle mashed potatoes. It's so luxurious. Idea two, add half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese and you have Parmesan mashed potatoes, spicy and delicious. Idea three, 
Into a pan, just add half a cup of garlic cloves to half a cup of olive oil, bring it to a boil, lower the heat, and simmer it for 20 minutes until the garlic is soft and just lightly browned. Then turn off the heat and let it cool. After 20 minutes, add the tender garlic cloves to the mashed potatoes, along with three tablespoons of the garlic oil. Mix them in and wow, really garlicky mashed potatoes. That's three variations that everyone will love. But don't forget the classic, it's really good too. I just can't help myself, I have to try it. Mm. It is, it's creamy and chunky. You can really taste a little sour cream, so good. So in the pan here, I've cooked about two cups of boiling potatoes. They're the firm, round ones rather than the baking potatoes. And I peeled them and just cooked them in a little butter for about 10 or 15 minutes until they're really just tender and browned. And that should, they should be perfect right now. Now I'm going to make the basis of it, which is this gorgeous omelet all mixed together. I'm going to start with, just like an omelet, eight eggs. And I actually find that you can use whatever's left over from dinner. If you have chicken and broccoli the night before, it makes a delicious frittata. Counting. <laughs> One more. Let me just scramble them a little bit. And then we're going to add lots of great flavorings. About 15 ounces of ricotta, which is one whole small container and then three quarters of a pound of Gruyere cheese. Gruyere's this wonderful like Swiss cheese. I know, it's eggs, cheese, and butter. It's delicious. How bad can that be? <laughs> and then a little bit of butter, the last major food group. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you eat this every day, but once in a while for a treat, it's wonderful. And then basil. I think basil is just such a great flavoring. So I'll just take the leaves off the stems and chop them very roughly. I love the smell of fresh basil. And then the last two ingredients are a third of a cup of flour to give it a little substance and three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder to make it rise. So I'm going to stir this all together. Make sure it's nicely blended. Cheeses and the basil and eggs. And that's it. I'm just going to pour this right over the potato. And then this whole thing goes in the oven. So instead of making individual omelets for everybody, I have one big omelet and we're all going to share it. So it goes in the oven at 350 degrees for about 50 minutes to an hour. And it's going to be puffed and golden and delicious. Oh, how gorgeous is that? Whew. And just in case you're all still hungry, I have a potato basil frittata. Oh. <laughs> What's in this, I know? It's potatoes and basil still and gruyere sizzling. and ricotta. And it's beautiful. Devin, ricotta. <laughs> there are a lot of voices oh, coming from over here. here. <laughs> Hot, hot, hot. Oh, it's fantastic. Are there leeks in Thank you. I think that one's. So first I'm just going to test them, make sure they're really done. And I just use a cake tester, a skewer. OK, no resistance, exactly right. I'm going to drain them. I'll show you what I do. I have a little secret about this. So this is two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. I boil these for about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of the potatoes. And what I'm going to do is I drain them and then take a nice clean kitchen towel, got to be clean, and put it right over the top and just let them steam for about 10 minutes. And the steam gets in the potatoes and they end up perfectly cooked. So in the meantime, I'm going to make the dressing. Most potato salads are so boring. They're like potatoes and mayonnaise with maybe a little salt if you're lucky. I just think they can be really flavorful. I add lots of fresh herbs like tarragon and dill. I start with one cup of mayonnaise. You don't have to make your own. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. I like a little bit of acid and things like this. It just gives it an edge that really gives it lots of flavor. This is a small lemon, so it should be perfect. Two tablespoons of tarragon vinegar. If you don't have tarragon vinegar, any good white wine vinegar is fine. 
Don't go out and buy a whole bottle of tarragon vinegar for two tablespoons. Two teaspoons of salt. Remember, this is the dressing, and potatoes are fairly bland, so you want them to have lots of flavor. One teaspoon of pepper, and just give it a whisk together. And then I'm gonna add tarragon, fresh dill, red onion, scallions. It's gonna have really good flavor. So these potatoes are just cool enough to handle. I actually love to put the dressing on a potato salad while the potatoes are still warm because it really absorbs better. Two pounds of potatoes. All done. Okay, into a bowl. And remember, you wanna do this while they're still a little bit warm. This isn't the time to go answer the phone. Okay, enough dressing just to moisten it. Give it a big stir. And see, when you toss it, it breaks up a little bit. So you don't want to make them too small to start with. OK. Next, three tablespoons of chopped scallions, just right into the salad. Three tablespoons of minced onions. And then some fresh herbs to give it a really fresh flavor. So I'm going to use dill and tarragon, two tablespoons of each one. Just give the dill a nice rough chop. Mm, I love the smell of it. OK. Two tablespoons of fresh tarragon. And then I'm going to put the rest of the dressing in. I think it really needs it. It's kind of my habit to put half the dressing in and then half later when I'm done. You just never know how much it's going to absorb. And I hate when it's just soggy. So give it a nice stir. The nice thing about this potato salad is it has to sit for about 30 minutes. All the flavors meld together. They get into the potatoes. I'm making a special breakfast for Jeffrey. It's potato latkes with applesauce something from my childhood. My mother used to make them when I was little. Basically two baking potatoes that I've peeled. And I'm just grating them in a box grater. You can actually do it in a food processor on the grating disc, but for two potatoes, it's not worth making a mess. You don't want to do this too long in advance because the potatoes are turning brown. Not pretty. The big thing here is keep your fingers out of the grater. <laughs> okay, so that's two potatoes. So I take a clean kitchen towel and just put the potatoes right inside and just roll the kitchen towel around it and then just squeeze it right over the sink so you get as much liquid out of it as you can possibly get. This is actually why baking potatoes are good for this. Any other potato has much more moisture in it. Baking potatoes tend to be a little dry. Okay, fantastic, right into the bowl. Okay, next I need one egg. Beat it for a second. Right into the potatoes. Three tablespoons of flour. So it's really like making pancakes, but it has potato in it. Okay, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and just give it a big stir. Okay, ready to fry the pancakes. It's like time to make the donuts. So I'm just going to heat up a big pan. You don't want to crowd them because you want them to really fry nicely. And I've made some clarified butter, which is really helpful. It doesn't burn at a high temperature. Three tablespoons of clarified butter. Clarified butter is really important because the milk solids in butter are going to burn, and you don't want this to. So to make clarified butter, what you do is heat butter and just let it settle. The milk solids will come out to the bottom, and then you pour off the clear golden liquid, and that's clarified butter. OK, clarified butter is nice and hot. It's got a tablespoon of pancake mix right in. For orders, I do little potato pancakes, but for this, I think I'm gonna do a heaping tablespoon for each one, just for Jeffrey and me. Who is he gonna be happy? So I think I'll get probably six out of this, which is perfect. Three for him, three for me. So I'm just gonna let them brown on one side for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna flip them over. Mm, do these smell good? There's something wonderful about those crisp potato pancakes and that sort of creamy applesauce. Such a great combination. I think they smell like they're just about ready to, mm, wait till you see this. Perfect. Absolutely perfect potato pancake. Just check each one before you turn it over. Make sure it's just perfectly golden brown on the underside. Hi, babe. Hey, what you got? I'm making breakfast for us. You're making breakfast for me? <laughs> yeah. What are you I doing? know, it what rarely you, what happens. What are you making? What are you making? <laughs> 
How about potato pancakes and applesauce? What a great combination. A very old-fashioned Eastern European Jewish. I'll tell you what. And you and I. And that's <laughs> old us. Old-fashioned Eastern <laughs> European Jews. Ooh, that is really and good. I think breakfast is served. Really good. Wow. Well, well, I hope you like them. Skillet roasted chicken and potatoes is the perfect comforting weeknight dinner. So what I did was I marinated chicken thighs in buttermilk, and what that does is really tenderize it for like eight to 12 hours, not more than that, otherwise it gets too tender. I'm just gonna take these chicken thighs and put it in a skillet, a little oil in the bottom, and just let the marinade drain off. These are bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs. Okay, this is the last one, right in there. You want space between them so they roast really evenly. So I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of mustard. And just a splash of white wine. I'm using Chablis, but whatever you have in the fridge. Just mix them together. This really has great layers of flavor. Because I'm the mustard and wine, and then I'm gonna add thyme, and you can just see it. when it all bakes together, it's just fabulous. So this dish has chicken and potatoes together. I'm gonna to cook the chicken first and then put the potatoes in. So you have a whole dinner. And this is just one skillet, no side dishes. When I started trying to make things in one dish instead of having lots of dishes as usual, I thought this was just fantastic because it might've taken a few minutes to make dinner, but cleanup was like such an easy thing to do. Okay. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with fresh thyme leaves. Next is a little sprinkle of paprika. Just gives a little smoky flavor to it. And then salt and pepper. Pepper. Nice thing about this dish is everybody loves it. Chicken and potatoes, what's not to like? Okay, into the oven, 350 degrees for 30 minutes. So the first part of the chicken is done. Oh, this looks delicious, just as it is, but I'm gonna make it even better. Mmm, smells fabulous. See how the chicken and the paprika and the thyme all make it have so much flavor. So I'm just gonna take the chicken out. I'll show you what I'm doing. This is the key to one pot cooking. It has several stages. So I've got two large Yukon Gold potatoes, and they're actually unpeeled, which is even better. And I'm just gonna put them right into the chicken juices and the flavors, the mustard and wine, everything that's in the bottom of this pan. Just slice them about a quarter of half inch thick. And then I'm gonna flavor them. Can of potatoes with that garlic. So I've got a tablespoon of garlic, just goes on top of that. Salt and pepper. This is just a great weeknight meal. It's so easy to do. You do the first stage, have yourself a glass of wine, do the second stage, and dinner's ready. I'm just gonna toss the potatoes in the juices so they really get into it, the flavor of the potatoes. All those chicken juices and mustard and wine. Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay, now I'm just gonna put the chicken right back on and then it goes back in the oven and finishes cooking. So you've got everything together in one dish. You don't even need a side dish. Just wanna get all the juices. Okay, I'm gonna get this back into the oven. I'm gonna tell you what happens next. I'll put the skillet into a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. When the time's up, I'll take it out Raise the oven temperature to 425. Transfer the chicken to a plate. And cover it loosely with foil. While it rests, I'll put the potatoes back into the oven for 15 minutes to get them brown and crispy. Then it's back to the oven to remove the potatoes. Yum. And I'll put the chicken back on top of the potatoes, ready for serving.
So the next high-low dish I'm making is I'm gonna take a simple baked potato and I'm gonna do a crust with herbs and lemon zest. And then I'm gonna fill it with, with feta. Okay, I'm gonna take these four huge potatoes, put them on the sheet pan. Okay, then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pierce them with a fork because otherwise you'll have potatoes exploding all over your oven, which isn't pretty. Not to mention you wouldn't have dinner. Okay, now I'm gonna make an herb and lemon rub that I'm gonna put on the potatoes and it makes them taste so good. So first I need rosemary. I'm gonna just chop it first. I need about a tablespoon. Just put it right in the food processor. And now two teaspoons of thyme leaves. The zest of one lemon and lots of salt. I'm using a tablespoon of fleur de sel or sea salt, which has got kind of a briny flavor rather than being too sharp and salty. And just give that a pulse so it gets really finely chopped. Okay. Mm. Well, does this smell good? The thing I'm gonna do is rub all the potatoes in olive oil and then roll them around in this mixture so it adheres to the outside of it and then bake them, and that really gets the flavor into it. So, a little olive oil. You don't have to measure it. Just kind of rub it on. Make sure each potato is covered. Olive oil actually does three things. Keeps the skin tender, which is good when you're eating it. It flavors the potato, but it also allows the lemon and the, all the herbs to adhere to it. Lots of flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna take each one and just roll it around in the herbs and the salt and rosemary. And how good does that look? Not look great. Just enough on each one to give it lots of flavor. Okay, into the oven, 400 degrees for 60 minutes, and they're gonna be really tender, and I'm gonna make a great feta filling for them. So the potatoes are almost done. I'm gonna make some whipped feta. I'm gonna slit the potatoes and pile it inside. So first I need six ounces of Greek feta. I'm gonna crumble it up. You can use French feta, which is a little milder, but I kind of like the tanginess of Greek feta. I've got two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice, a third of a cup of olive oil, two ounces of cream cheese. It has to be room temperature, otherwise it won't whip well. Salt and pepper. Very simple potato, but it really takes it to another level. And just give it a blitz in the food processor. I want it nice and creamy. How good an idea was this? Okay, I think the potatoes are done. Mmm. They smell so great. Lemon and herbs and salt. Who wouldn't like that? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna slit them open. Oh, these are really hot. Open it a little bit. Put some of the whipped feta inside. Just pile it up. This is not a boring potato. Maybe some fresh chives. Okay, I'm gonna finish this one. I'm gonna do the rest and I'm gonna put them on a plate. These are gonna be really good. These are the easiest potatoes in the world. I think I've made more garlic roasted potatoes than every other vegetable combined. I start with red potatoes, but you can really use any kind of thin skin potato, maybe about two pounds. If they're big potatoes, I'll cut them in quarters. If they're small potatoes, I'll cut them in half. Okay, a little olive oil. Just drizzle it on. Coarse salt, I use kosher salt, but you can use sea salt or any kind of salt you have around. Lots of fresh pepper, give it a little spice. Now the secret to my potatoes. Really good garlic. I was trying to find garlic that's very firm like this. It doesn't, it doesn't have a big sprout on it. You don't want to plant in your potatoes. You want a really good garlic. Peel six cloves of garlic. There's a lot of garlic in this meal, but when you cook garlic for a long time, it becomes really sweet. So it's not gonna to be too garlicky a meal. Now the easiest way I find to chop garlic is just to leave the tip of the blade on the board and run the knife back and forth and really let the blade do the work. 
Okay. Lots of garlic. Oh, it smells so good. I'm going to use my hands to mix up the olive oil, salt I've already put on it, the pepper. Okay, into the oven. 400 degrees, about 30 minutes. Oh, these are the garlic roasted potatoes, and they are seriously garlic. They're all crisp on the outside and delicious inside. 